Hello, I gotta water my plants. I'm gonna let you guys join me while I'm doing this little chore. And I have a story to share with you guys. Yep, an epic story. My personal encounter with Andre the Giant. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I just spent a 12 hour shift at work and I came home, fed my animals, got those chores done and I stepped into the heated greenhouse and now I got to water my plants. But I have a story to share with you guys while I'm doing this. So I invited you guys along for the journey. So for the people that know me, know that I've had a very interesting life. Very interesting. My uh, adventures take me back to 1980 through 1983. Uh, my friend was um, the manager of the local armory and they would often rent the facilities out for different events and one of the events they would rent out to was uh, Portland wrestling. That was a big thing back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, being that my friend was manager, he asked us if we wanted a little side job making 50 bucks a night. And in 1980s, 50 bucks a night was a lot of money for just a couple of hours work. We were tasked with setting up the wrestling ring and then taking it down at the end of the evening. Yeah, so we all know Andre the Giant was a professional wrestler uh, before he became that famous actor in The Princess Bride. Yeah, he played that legendary role. So one night we set the uh, rings up and the uh, crew came in or the wrestlers and out of the uh, van i didn't pay much attention to the the uh handbill that night on what was going on or even who was showing up i just thought it was a regular lineup of wrestlers like dutch savage bull ramus uh, rowdy roddy piper you know those fellows they were interesting characters but behind the scenes they're just like you and me and that's all i saw them as just like you and me but on the ring they were entertainers. So they came and uh, when they got out of the vehicles, I saw this big hulk of a man step out. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Oh my gosh, he was huge. And uh, knowing him personally, this is the only encounter I ever had with him was just this one night. Uh, for oh about six hours I hung around him this man was gentle a little hard to understand because of that French accent he had I was just not used to it I was a small-town hick raised over on the Oregon coast but now living in the city over here in central uh, part of Oregon yeah we uh, hosted the uh, one of the events was the Portland wrestling. So yeah, he gets out of the van and he is just a massive man, but very, very kind gentleman. And out from behind him comes four little short guys. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, I wonder what was on that handbill. Cause this is going to be a spectacle. This really is going to be a spectacle tonight. And I could only guess what was on the bill. Andre the Giant and the Fighting Midgets. Boy, that was, that was an epic, epic bout. It was hilarious. It's very, very entertaining to say the least. Well, how the show went was those four, Andre lumbered onto the ring. He climbed into his corner 
and then the four little uh, short guys, they clambered onto the ring and huddled in their corner together. The bell rang. Those four guys took Andre down. They took their time though. They were climbing all over him. It was truly entertainment. Anyway, they took him out like a sandcastle on the surf. Yes, they did. It was funny. But backstage in the dressing rooms, they were all back there goofing and having a good time. And then the other wrestlers who had yet to come up were planning their moves and their, their you know, staging their events and what they were going to do to each other. So, sorry if I've spoiled it for some of you who are fans of wrestling. Yeah, it was for entertainment only. It wasn't real. It was... Yeah, it was. Well, some of it was real. Some of it was accidental and some of it were, you know, real, but all, most all of it was staged. It really was. Uh, I can tell you by firsthand account. In fact, one evening I was uh, uh, setting up the rings and the show hadn't begun yet, but the owner, uh, Don Owen was his name, his, uh, his wife, or no, his, his girlfriend came out and asked my brother and I if we would consider becoming Portland wrestlers. Well, Bob, my brother and I kind of looked at each other, kind of got looked back at her, and then we go like, "No, thank you." <laughs> anyway, we uh, we chose not to follow that path. Almost, almost, I was asked, but nah, just didn't interest me. But then. One night, I remember, we were setting up the ruining and we noticed that the, one of the main timbers was cracked. Yeah, one of the main support timbers on that ring was cracked. And we asked Don for some extra money to be able to replace the timber. All he did was grumble, grumble. It was like, okay, whatever. Well, that night, they got into the, about the third quarter of the wrestling and one of the big wrestlers picked up another wrestler and did the famous body slam. Yeah, you can imagine what happened. He happened to have done the slam right over the timber that was cracked. Well, that, I, I, I was standing right there, right in front of it. And it's just, I watched that timber and it's like, a, boom, it buckled. Oh, the looks on their faces was priceless. They looked at each other like thinking I could just see, see what was going into their minds. It's like, what the heck just happened? The crowd, of course, just went nuts. Of course, they thought it was staged, but that was an accident. Was not staged at all. Was totally ad lib. Well, the wrestlers then, in a, a buckled ring, uh, one side of the ropes were the two corner uh, posts. They kind of like buckled in. It loosened the ropes. So they immediately jumped up and played the crowd. They played them really good. So um, <laughs> they, they used those loose ropes and did some antics. And uh, it turned out to be very entertaining. They finished the match because you know what? Something like that happens. And you're in the entertainment industry, you know the rule. The show must go on. And it did go on, and it was epic. It left uh, a, a good memory in the minds of all those wrestling fans who joined them every time they came to town. The tickets sold like crazy. It was always a full house. Because back in the day, Portland Wrestling was the event uh, for the whole Pacific Northwest. It was epic. Anyway, I got my plants all watered. Hope I didn't miss any. Uh, I did. I missed some down here in the corner. I've been so busy planting things. I got uh, flowers and vegetables growing in almost every corner of the greenhouse. Now, I tried not to put anything on the floor because I still want to put my cement floor in. But these things are in containers where I can easily move the containers out in bulk and then uh, be able to um, put my cement uh, flooring in but I really did want to share with you guys the epic adventure and my uh, encounter my personal encounter with Andre the Giant I don't think too much about my life's past because 
I lived it. I just don't think too much about it and don't think that, it, uh, it's, you know, yeah, we had that. But when I stopped, th started thinking about this today and it's like, wait a minute. I met and worked with Andre the Giant one time, among other great people, uh, legends in their uh, time. And uh, that's worth telling, uh, even for historical sake, to, for preservation, for uh, history, uh, for this uh, venue in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Bill Owen was a pioneer in wrestling. He is the one that um, uh, contracted with uh, KPTV out of Portland to be able to uh, promote and air live Portland wrestling on TV. Well, it took off from there, and then you got WWF, WWE, and it just exploded from there. Uh, yeah, I met I met a lot of these guys. Uh, if you guys have any memories of Portland wrestling or uh, any of the wrestlers from there that went to WWF, WWE, please let me know in the comments and share some of your memories with them. And hey, if you remember that epic show where the ring collapsed at the armory, yeah, share your memories with me and also about that, uh, that um, fight between Andre the Giant and uh, the Fighting Midgets. I couldn't find any pictures of that or any of the used handbills, but uh, there's uh, people who will collaborate that with me because I'm not pulling your leg. This is true stories. I, you know, in hindsight, I've been through a lot, a lot. I've been on this planet for 62 and a half years and I've been through a lot and I've done a lot. And not so interesting to me at the, you know, at, at this time until I really stop and think about it and look back hindsight and say, wow, I did that? Golly! Excuse me while I go turn my water off. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is the end of that story. I'm sure I can think of some more uh, adventures that I've had in my life. Now, there's something that happened around the same time, 1983. I'm working on another show for you on that one. I'm titling the show preliminary preliminarily titling the show it's called the mystery surrounding this gold treasure mm-hmm and it has something to do with the temptations the singing group the temptations and me got your interest stay tuned for that story I'm your host Jerry Hansen this is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm I want to thank you guys for joining me after work here in my greenhouse to water my plants and get things uh, all settled down for the night. I'm gonna go in and produce this video and make it live for you guys so you can enjoy the material. If you like what you're seeing, please give me a thumbs up, like the show, that really helps us out. Giving me a lot of thumbs up on every video that you guys see, if you like it, thumbs up it. If you don't like it, thumbs down it. It gives me an idea on uh, how I'm doing. It's kind of a, a litmus test, if you will. Also, uh, please subscribe and click that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I upload them. Uh, so, like I said, leave a comment. If you guys have any memories of these, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Please, always be safe and always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next episode, okay? Bye-bye.